think now is as good a time as any. I think 1.30 is the start time, so we'll go ahead and get started. This is deploying your backend like a CDN with WebAssembly. My name is Brooks Townsend. I'm a lead software engineer at Cosmonic, and I've been a maintainer of the CNCF Wasm Cloud project since 2019, effectively since the project started in open source. So love contributing to open source. Obviously, I'm a WebAssembly enjoyer, which is why I'm here avid Rust station, and demo enthusiast, as you'll get to see as a part of this talk today. On the, I always like providing an agenda for talks. We're gonna talk a little bit about what a CDN is, why people use CDNs, go a little into kind of my passion for network optimization here, we'll look at some diagrams, we'll do some demos, we'll look at some more demos, we'll look at some more diagrams. It's gonna take up the, the meatiest portion of the talk and then we'll kind of wrap it up with what is this all good for and, and kind of where are we going with, with all of this next. This mascot, I feel like I should point out, is Cosmonics Tardigrade, Terry the Tardigrade. Very cute, uh, take pictures, come get stickers, all that stuff. So what is a CDN? Obviously short for uh, Content Delivery Network. Found this great quote from Cloudflare, uh, but, but at its core, a CDN is just a distributed network of edge nodes with the goal of getting static web content or static content delivered to the users as quickly, cheaply, reliably, and securely as possible. Um, I really like this definition. It's very simple, it describes the technology well, uh, and is mostly focused, of course, on the front end side of applications. And uh, if you haven't used a CDN before, haven't heard of the concept, I think this is a great illustration where when I run an application, when I host it, um, I may run a web app, a full stack thing uh, in the US West region, and, but people are gonna be accessing that application from all over the globe. You never know where your users are gonna be, and actually transmitting that data from your application all the way to, say, if somebody accesses it from Australia, is gonna take up the vast majority of just time to complete the thing that your application is doing, right? You could be doing something totally simple, but if you have to traverse all the way across the globe, there's only so fast a network request can go. So a CDN takes your static web assets. Whenever somebody requests something from your website, like your index page, it will kind of pull through an edge node and then cache that at a node as close to the user as possible so that whenever somebody else makes a request in that region, it's making a request to that edge node instead of the central server. All kind of in the goal of optimizing how long people get, or how long people have to wait for that request to come back. And you know, this is kind of what I wanna talk about. Why do people use CDNs? I've already started talking about it a little bit, but really people want their applications to load quickly. They want users to load up their application, feel happy about how snappy it is, you know, and go on their merry way. There's that oh so famous Google study that if a mobile app or a mobile website takes longer than two or three seconds to load, over 50% of the people will just abandon the page, never to come back. So it's obviously important to get things, your application to load as quick as possible. People also use CDNs because they wanna spend less money. Cloud egress bandwidth costs are very, very expensive. And if you're transmitting the same five meg image to a million people, you're paying money when you really could just be caching it closer to them and you know, paying less money. People like money, people don't like spending money. So people like using CDNs. There are other benefits, of course, to using them. Many different projects, many different companies that host CDNs, including security, DDoS protection, things like that. But by and large, CDNs are a win-win. Spend less money, users hit your app faster, users happier, you happier, right? So it's, it's worth pointing out, and this is in the Cloudflare article as well, that this only applies to static web front-end assets. If you're hosting a server or a back-end, that is just going to live on an actual hosting platform. You're not distributing your entire backend with those static assets. So if your application is very heavy on the backend, you know, you're hitting the database every single request, using a CDN will help for the initial load, but you're still gonna be sending that request back to the central server every time. And so I feel like this kind of begs the question, why aren't we just distributing backends with the static assets. Why don't we just throw our backends all over the place, all over the globe, and you know, the users can load the entire application quicker, right? 
surely these CDNs have figured out a way to take a cloud native application and throw it all over the place. So can we do it? Nope. Thanks everyone, uh, really enjoyed coming for this talk. I think I've got about 30 minutes left for Q&A if you wanna, no. Um, the, the real answer to this, why we haven't done this for backends is because it's really hard, right? Like there are so many, it's more than just throw application in place when it comes to backends. You have to deal with where your data is specifically gonna be located, what kind of platform are you developing and deploying on. There's a lot more to thinking about where you can deploy your application to when it comes to backends. And the no, as we'll start to rotate away from just the hard no, is really more of like no with the way that you can build apps now. You can deploy your application to a bunch of different geolocated servers if you specifically design it that way. You can have that in mind from the beginning. You can think, oh, this is where I'm gonna put my data. I'm gonna be able to deploy to all these different servers. But you need to know what kind of platform you're gonna to deploy to. You need to know lots of specific things about the deployment target. And that's gonna depend per application. So CDNs don't really have a way to just do that for the majority of apps. And if you're doing this with your application, it probably means you run or control your own infrastructure. You stand that up, and it almost certainly means you're not using Kubernetes. Distributing Kubernetes across multiple regions is hard, multiple clouds is harder, and to edge nodes, things that can dynamically uh, add and remove from the cluster is almost certainly impossible. I'm happy to be proved wrong in that aspect, but even if you're doing like a hub and spoke model and all kinds of things, say you get it all working, it's gonna cost you so much money to run Kubernetes clusters in all these different places. And this kind of brings me to the goal, like why I have been working on Wasm Cloud, why I've been working at Cosmonic and applied for this talk. So many applications that we write are really just bounded by the network cost. Compute is kind of cheap. We have really powerful computers now, and it's pretty rare that consumer applications or even industry applications are bounded by the amount of CPU and RAM that we can throw at it. Vast majority of the time it takes to handle an individual request is getting there and getting back. And I feel like we should be able to do this. We should be able to optimize all of our applications by pushing it as close to the user as possible by minimizing that data and the data size and distance across the whole network, right? And that's what I wanna focus on today. I have two demos where I'm working on this. One is more of a hobby, uh, singular application, not very distributed that I wanna spread around. And the other one is an industry, a little bit more of a real world example that's distributed. It has hard requirements for a real world application. And I wanna deploy it like the way CDNs deploy static assets, which is all over the place to as many places as possible. And I'm gonna do it using Wasm Cloud. Wasm Cloud is an application runtime in the CNCF. It's a sandbox project and we're working to apply for incubation, but you can see it on the landscape that they published uh, yesterday in the CNCF blog post. Um, we've been around since 2019 working on the project and what Wasm Cloud does is it's a WebAssembly orchestrator with declarative deployments. It's a single binary, so it's completely cloud edge and platform agnostic. You don't need to run it in a container, but you can. You don't need to run it in Kubernetes, but you can. And really what this creates is just a nice vendor neutral binary to run your WebAssembly apps. You can securely access vendor list capabilities, application level capabilities like HTTP, key value, messaging, uh, files, bought with a blob store, things like that. And in my opinion, what I love about the most about Wasm Cloud is the seamless compute mesh. We use NATS, the CNCF project under the hood for our networking stack. And so what that means is when you can set up your NATS network, all uh, if you run multiple Wasm Cloud runtimes, multiple WebAssembly applications, they can all talk to each other seamlessly, whether they're local or distributed across multiple different machines. And you don't have to build any of that into the app, which is awesome. Automatic load balancing, automatic failover, all those kind of things. And Wasm Cloud not only is part of the CNCF, it uses as many cloud native standards that aren't container specific as possible. We publish all of our WebAssembly modules into OCI registries. We use the open application model spec to define our declarative applications. We publish cloud events as a standard event format for ingestion. 
NATs for our networking layer, and everything is instrumented with OpenTelemetry. It's very much a cloud-native technology, just bringing WebAssembly to that part. So let's talk about the hobby application, right? Hobby applications, this is your Fruit Jokes app, this is your ChatGPT5 wrapper for your new startup, it's your image rotator, the small applications that you can run in one place, and the goal of distributing this around with a CDN is just push that logic as close to the user as possible so that your little requests or for your hobby app just get handled quicker, right? This is gonna have a static front end, so you can front this with a CDN and then all the static assets will get there quicker. Uh, but we're also minimizing the data distance by distributing it closer or to multiple regions so people can get that quicker. Now the actual architecture of this application, this is a Wasm Cloud app, but really specifically it's a, it's a WebAssembly application where we have one WebAssembly module called Fruit Jokes, of course, that just has some business logic around you know, generating a fruit joke or, or fetching it from a database and then returning it as an HTTP request. So we have two capabilities here, and this is kind of what's different about Wasm Cloud, the secure access of capabilities, but the, what it does, it just abstracts these non-functional requirements from your app. So you don't build in the HTTP library, you dynamically kind of link to it or bind to it at runtime. Same with the uh, NATS database, the, the key value store that I'll use, you can swap that at any time. And what makes this different is this is what this application would look like when it's just deployed like on my local machine. I throw these things into a Wasm Cloud runtime, it's able to orchestrate it and then I can get my fruit jokes. When I run it on another machine, Wasm Cloud is communicating uh, with each other with, with different Wasm Cloud runtimes using NATs, but it's just the same copy of an application running in different places. That's how we're distributing this. And we're gonna do it, oh, I'm sorry for the light mode. Uh, we're gonna do it with WADM. WADM is a project inside of the Wasm Cloud organization. It stands for Wasm Cloud Application Deployment Manager. You don't really need to know about the internals of this. It's just a reconciliation loop. You define a manifest, you say, I want these things to run, very much like a Kubernetes deployment, same kind of deal. And this is how it looks when you define it. Just like a, reg, you know, just like a Kubernetes deployment, I say I'm gonna run this OCI, or I'm gonna run this actor from an OCI registry. I wanna run three copies of it. And using the daemon scaler, which is like a Kubernetes daemon set, I'm gonna run it on every single Wasm Cloud runtime that I can find in my network. And let's take a look at this application, right? So you can actually hit this yourself if you'd like. This is fruitjokes.cosmonic.app. Uh, very fun, I'll leave it up after the demo so you can generate as many uh, jokes as you'd like to your heart's content. So, what do you call a fruit that's rough around the edges? A bad apple. Okay, okay, one more, one more. Uh, what did the lemon say to the lime? Sour, are you doing? You can tell I figured out how to do a CSS animation and it made me very excited. Uh, but this application itself is, is very simple. This is just a different visualization to the architecture diagram I showed before. It's your one WebAssembly component and it's connected to an HTTP server and a NATS key value store. If you actually look at the infrastructure that this is running on, we can see that there is a Wasm Cloud host that's running in AWS. It's on an ARM machine and running Linux. There's a Wasm Cloud host that's running on GCP, which is actually on x86. There's a Wasm Cloud host that's actually running on my MacBook, which is an M1 Mac, obviously on Mac, and one running in Azure. Uh, and all of these are running in different regions from west to central to east. And the great thing is, my little fun hobby app, because I'm compiling it to WebAssembly, I didn't have to worry about if I was gonna run it on my MacBook or on x86 or ARM. You can just distribute it to all of these different places. And because Wasm Cloud has a runtime that can run there, you can run your WebAssembly app. So this is kind of the, the, first, uh, the first step, the first thing that we're gonna look at for deploying backends like a CDN, WebAssembly makes this awesome because just like a static asset that doesn't really need to run on anything, WebAssembly is platform agnostic. And you may be thinking to yourself, wow, with such a complex application, I can't believe you were able to do that. 
And you might, you, the, the real question is, can, can, like, is this really the best use of Wasm Cloud? Like, is this really the best use of our effort to write this like, distributed framework so that you can run this simple application? Well, not really. You know, there are, there are products out there like edge functions or fast style like products that really do this type of application better. Even whether it's WebAssembly or their own specific thing, you know, things like uh, CDNs offer places where you can add logic like this, like for generating a little dumb fruit joke, and you can deploy it all over the place just like your CDN. And that's honestly a better use case for this type of application. Um, and I really like to point this out because I write a lot of examples for Wasm Cloud. I write a lot of like kind of WebAssembly examples. And sometimes they can kind of feel like this. They're little like hobby apps, they're little like demo apps. And I really want to focus on taking advantage of the full distributed nature of Wasm Cloud and what its strengths are. Um, even if you were to do this with um, this type of edge functions, you may even be looking for something more based on the compute, the expense, all that stuff. And so the main demo for this talk, the thing that I'm most excited about is the industry application. This is an inventory management application that has some pretty hard requirements. We're gonna have a central server for administration, like a corporate. Uh, we're gonna be running this part of the application. Uh, you, it could be in a cloud. We're persisting data with a cloud data store. And we're gonna be keeping track of all the, in, the, all the inventories of our different branches that are all over the US. Now these deployments are, depending on your definition of edge, edge, but certainly not, have to be in the cloud, these deployments are gonna be on premises in the office location, all local compute, and it's a hard requirement that this app has to work even if the central network is offline. So if you are working locally in a branch and you receive a, uh, an order for 100 pieces of, or 100, what's a unit of paper that that's a piece, whatever, I'm not gonna spend time on that, 100 pieces of paper, you need to be able to take that order if corporate is having some problems with their Wi-Fi, right? You can't just collapse. New branches can be added at any time. Business is booming. We'll open, open up more branches. We don't need to be adding more cluster nodes or the complexity there. And branches can be closed at any time. Limitless paper in a paperless world. We may not need one of those branches anymore. So I'm calling this, of course, very fun, uh, the Munder Diffwin app. And the architecture, let me tell you why Wasm Cloud is perfect for this. We have hot swappable capabilities. You can choose different implementations based on the actual requirements of where we're running. So we could store things in a warehouse database, and then the corporate app can store things in a corporate cloud database. We can hot swap those, and we don't have to worry about committing ourselves to a specific vendor. And Wasm Cloud, what it's doing here, and you'll see, is creating this compute mesh with automatic failover. And so uh, combined with NATS, we can have a deployment topology that can work in the branch. And even if the network goes offline, everything can still keep processing locally and still working. And then as soon as the network comes back online, everything reconnects and your WebAssembly app is good to go. Taking a look at the application diagram, it's slightly more complicated, but using the same kind of component building blocks that the other app is uh, using. We're, we have an HTTP server. We have the notion of a messaging or a, like a pub sub messaging capability, and then a key value capability that has two actual different implementations. So for corporate, I'm gonna be storing everything in NATS Jetstream or NATS KV. That's just gonna be replicated across the different uh, NATS servers, which is great. And then the individual branches are gonna be listening for messages, you know, saying what's your inventory looking like. It's another WebAssembly component that's managing the branch and then storing things locally in Redis. This is something that we can spin up on the work, work uh, warehouse computer and we're good to go. Now, uh, I already kind of talked through the different pieces of that application, but it's really key to note that the original architecture diagram extends very well with Wasm Cloud because all we're doing when we're adding a new branch to this, it's not dealing with cluster IPs or, or doing anything complicated with like etcd. We're simply adding another instance of the Wasm Cloud runtime and adding another instance of the Wasm Cloud runtime, essentially spinning up another copy of this part of the application. Again, we're gonna be doing that using Wadm. 
I can lay out in a declarative manifest to say, here's what I want to run on the corporate computers. Here's what I want to run on all of the different branch computers. And then that, that will just be man maintained for me declaratively. So let's take a look at this application. Please, Arc. So like I said, I figured out how to do a CSS spin, and I love it. I slowed this one down so it can be going all the time. This application, uh, this is kind of the corporate dashboard where we can look at all of our different branches, right? We can request a rundown which says, hey, give me all the rest of your inventory by the end of the day, and we can query it, and we can see that there are three different branches that we have connected, right? Scranton, Seattle, of course, that one's running uh, in US West on, on Azure, and Stanford, which is actually running here on my, my local MacBook. We've got some fancy UI things, right? We can filter by the, we can filter by the different branches, but proud of doing a simple, stupid front end uh, aside, let's talk a little bit about this application. When we look at actually managing the inventory on a branch, we could do a couple of different things. I'll show you kind of the, the raw thing first. We might have someone in the warehouse who is using Redis directly to update, you know, the, uh, update the inventory of this app, right? So I can set something like the uh, printers value, uh, you know, we got a new shipment of printers, we're upgrading to, you know, having 100. This is my machine running in Azure. I can request a rundown and hit a query, and that, that one in Seattle has now updated its inventory to 100, right? So this uh, dashboard is essentially able to make requests of all of the branches and get their inventory. The real thing that I love about this is that if we take a look at the infrastructure again, we can see that it's the same application, including Fruit Jokes, actually, running on all of these different cloud uh, and edge nodes. It's completely cloud agnostic across Azure, GCP, um, AWS, and then on my local MacBook. I'm spreading it around different clouds to illustrate different branches because I don't have access to paper company warehouses to run this deployment on, but you get the picture. Now, the really cool thing thing I love about this application is the ability to go offline. So the Stanford branch is the one that's running here on my local machine. I can process inventory orders by sending a NATS message. I can say, hey, you know, I want to get another shipment of ink. Um, we're getting five more, and um, I want you to process this shipment. So we process that. If we request a rundown and query the inventory, you can see our ink level goes up by five. Great. We process that message. Now this is all being stored in corporate's database. The thing that I'm querying when I hit query inventory is actually running in the cloud, not here on my MacBook. So what I can do is I can remove Wi-Fi connection on my computer, just disconnect. This is not working anymore because, you know, no internet. I can come back and I can continue to publish messages here, getting more shipments of things. I can take an order so someone comes in and says, hey, you know, I want to make sure to get uh, five more instances of ink. And then I can, you know, all of this is just continuing to process locally. So this distributed app that we put on all the different branches, even though I lost connection for a little bit, still working just fine, all processing locally. I can turn back on Wi-Fi. Hopefully I can get back here. And then if we look at the Stanford branch here, we're still kind of, if we query the inventory, the corporate database hasn't caught up yet because everything is still processing locally. If I request a rundown, which is saying, hey, give me all the new things. Oh, it might not be on. You can see that the new ink copies came and synced up to the, the corporate database. And this works the same across all of the different databases. If Azure has a temporary network meltdown, or what have you, all of it works the same uh, there. And we've kind of satisfied the, uh, we, have, we have one more thing to satisfy about this application, which is that we can add and remove branches at any time. This is the really cool thing about the declarative deployments with Wadom. I can actually launch a new Wasm Cloud host, and I'll just do it, uh, well, I was having fun with this testing. Um, I can just do this on my local machine and as long as I have this label that this is a branch saying, hey, I'm running this in a warehouse, we can do that one too, warehouse equals true. We can launch another Wasm Cloud host that's connected to this NAS network. And you can see as soon as this pops up here that Wadom is going to take care of deploying an entire new copy of all of that infrastructure on that host. So as soon as this comes in, 
It's going to work on a little bit. Now the branch manager is deployed there. The NAS messaging provider and the Redis key value store is deployed there. And this is now a completely new setup branch. So we've just added a completely new cluster node, and that just works. We can also remove this cluster node, and that's it. It doesn't take any more than that to add or remove to distribute this application around more because of the way that Wasm Cloud combines with NATS to do this deployment. This really enables a flexible deployment topology that you really could not do with containers and Kubernetes. So what is all this good for? Just as a general category outside of inventory management, you know, outside of fruit jokes, what does this deployment, what does this enable us to do? This is really good for distributed data locations, pushing the application as close to the data as possible. Everything is working locally in that individual branch. It doesn't go to a central database. So it's great. That's where the data should live. It works better. It's great for heterogeneous environments, things that change all the time. Network constrained applications. So any requests that are any of those applications that don't really do that much compute, they're constrained by the network. Anytime you're trying to go multi-region, multi-cloud, deploy to a variety of edges, uh, this works really, really well for that. And obviously for failover, the ability for me to just turn off the Wi-Fi on my laptop, process things, come back online, then it just works. It's awesome. Things that might be better elsewhere, um, single component applications. This is the, or web front ends, this is kind of the amalgam of, of fruit jokes, right? It's a, it's a very simple application and really doesn't take advantage of the distributed nature, the capabilities of Wasm Cloud. Of course it works, it just is probably gonna be easier to start with, you know, create React app and, and go on your way. Anything that, when it comes to WebAssembly, you have an abstraction layer from the CPU and the operating system. It lets you deploy on any platform. It's awesome. But if you have an application that's specific to a CPU architecture or specific to running on Linux, you're gonna pay a slight penalty for that abstraction and you might not have access to all the same APIs. So it kind of just makes more sense to run a native application if you're binding yourself to that. And heavily optimized code, I think can give the impression that I mean that WebAssembly apps aren't optimized. But I wanna just be clear that this means that if, if you've essentially optimized your code to the point where you're watching specific syscalls or dealing with system level APIs, that the platform abstraction that you get with WebAssembly isn't, isn't really a benefit anymore. It, you are actually running a CPU intensive application and the network may not be the thing that is the constrainer for, for that application. And if I have to boil this all down to one slide, uh, what does this all mean? This is a seamless, painless, distributed application. I wrote this example in the CRAM for the conference. It didn't take me any code or logic to deal with distributing this out to different machines. WebAssembly lets you run your applications anywhere. Wasm Cloud orchestrates those applications and lets those applications talk to each other the same no matter how they're distributed. So Wasm runs your applications anywhere. Wasm Cloud lets them all talk to each other. And that really unlocks the next epic of computing to really take advantage of that like beautiful method of deploying to any platform, any cloud, any edge. If we had to look next on maybe how I would improve this talk, improve what we talked about today, we're moving fruit jokes to the front end. That doesn't have to be a back end app anymore. You know, obviously want to improve the demo, have a little management UI so I'm not, uh, you know, so we can look at another spinning logo. I know that you all like that. Um, it'd be awesome to look at deploying WebAssembly on device, really do true geo affinity for all of these requests so that, you know, I would love to host a server in this room that you all hit instead of going kind of over the network and work on maybe a first class data caching solution, again, to just continue to network optimize these applications. Um, I think that is all that I have for today. I want to leave some time for Q&A uh, with the cute logo, but I'll leave these up on screen. Um, everything that I've talked about today is enabled by Wasm Cloud, the open source project, the CNCF Sandbox project. We would love to have you in our open source Slack. It's a really lively bunch of folks in there. Um, and you can check out our GitHub organization to see all the projects that I talked about today. Um, uh, we actually host community meetings every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So if you come in, get in the Slack, and you can't find the link to that for some reason, please let me know. We'd love to have you on. Everybody is welcome. Thanks, everyone.
All right, I think I do have actually like four or five minutes for, for questions, so anybody is welcome. Yeah, Matt's. essentially starting up just like, um, so I did show that like starting up a Wasm Cloud host and then every, like the whole application kind of drops on it and gets scheduled, but essentially just automating that part of it. I, I think that's, yeah, that's exactly what we, that's exactly what we want to do. It obviously just comes down to the infrastructure, like having control of the infrastructure. Um, you don't want to have a, like an instance running constantly, like waiting for you to deploy that application onto it. Um, so I really see the future of that being on kind of a multi-tenant shared um, kind of cluster where you can run your application on demand for requests and then close it afterwards. Yes. Yeah, so this answer actually changed in the last, uh, I don't know, two, four weeks. Um, but the boundary between WebAssembly and Wasm Cloud is the component model. Um, all of the interactions that, that we're doing here, like when you invoke the WebAssembly, uh, the, the WebAssembly guest, or whenever you do the host calls, invoking the WebAssembly module is, feels very classic component model. You have an export that you can call. Um, when you, when the WebAssembly module itself makes a call, say to a key value store. Wasm Cloud takes that invocation from Wasi, you know, Wasi Cloud KV, and will actually package it up into an invocation and send it over NATs. And the great thing about that is that on the local loopback, it's actually a very negligible penalty to send a message over a TCP connection. Um, but it allows that message to be routed to any available key value store. So if I'm not running it on the same machine, it still works the exact same. Did that answer your, your question? Awesome. Uh, probably enough time for, for another one. I started at 1.31, so I'm going a minute over. All right, well, I'll definitely be hanging out around the, uh, afterwards uh, around the talk, so I appreciate you all for, for coming today.